everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Today we have a special guest, a, a real expert. Uh, he writes books and he does movies. Uh, welcome Neil Shulman today to our show and we're going to talk about a movie as well as some of the books that he's written. Neil, thank you for coming in. Dr. Paul, it is such a pleasure for me to be on with you today. You started off as a novelist. I guess you're still a novelist, but you've also been involved in movies. But was it mainly uh, as a novelist that you got started in your career? Well, actually, I started out as a libertarian journalist, uh, writing for small libertarian magazines like New Libertarian Notes. I, I think I broke through when I did an interview uh, originally for the New York Daily News with Robert Heinlein, the uh, libertarian science fiction writer. Uh, that got me a bit of a reputation. Shortly after that, I started working on my first novel, Alongside Night, which was published in 1979. By the 80s, I was selling scripts to The Twilight Zone when CBS brought it back on the air. Then later on, wrote nonfiction books like Stopping Power, Why 70 Million Americans Own Guns. Uh, I wrote a book about the O.J. Simpson case. Um, got very involved in, in, in sort of like that criminological investigation. Wrote a lot about Second Amendment issues. And, uh, and then uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the early 2000s, I started work on my first feature film, Lady Magdalene's, uh, which I uh, wrote, uh, directed, and uh, produced, and uh, even acted in a little bit. And uh, with the success of that winning some film festival awards, that gave me the opportunity to try to, in, in earnest, get a movie made from what I started out with, Alongside Night. And uh, uh, we've completed that movie just a few months ago, and now we're getting it out. Tell me about the name, Alongside Night. What does that mean? Alongside Night uh, is imagining uh, that we're looking at the Earth from outer space, and you're seeing the Terminator where it's night on one side and day on the other side. And the metaphor is, are we going to go in the direction of the, the dawn of the rebirth of freedom? or are we going to go into a long night of tyranny? Tell me who's all in it that uh, people will recognize and who did, did, you did the production, is that correct? Yes, I mean, I had other producers with me, but I was uh, uh, one of the guys writing the checks, so I guess that makes me a producer. Uh, although I did not finance it, the financing from the movie came uh, from Patrick A. Heller, uh, who uh, heads up Liberty Coin Service in Lansing, Michigan. And uh, Pat read the novel and was a fan of it going back all the way to 1979. And so when I was looking around for financing uh, in earnest starting around 2010, uh, pa Pat stepped up. Uh, but in terms of who's in the movie, uh, our biggest star is Kevin Sorbo, who in the 1990s was the number one actor uh, for, uh, worldwide for seven years uh, as Hercules in Hercules The Legendary Journeys. And he's done many movies since. Uh, the most recent one was a breakout hit in the last few months called God's Not Dead, where uh, Kevin, who is a, uh, a practicing Christian, uh, played an atheist who is challenging a Christian student. A very, very uh, uh, ch challenging movie. Um, other stars, uh, which people will know, uh, we have Jake Busey, uh, who was in the movie Contact with Jodie Foster and the movie Starship Troopers, Tim Russ and Garrett Wong, uh, both from the TV series Star Trek Voyager. Uh, we have Gary Graham, uh, who is the star of the TV series and, 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 and series of uh, uh, Fox Network movies called Alien Nation. Uh, we have Saeed Faraj, who played opposite Matt Damon in Paul Greengrass's movie about, uh, about the invasion of Iraq uh, called Green Zone. Uh, and we have Valence Thomas from Men in Black 3 and Mara Marini from Parks and Recreation. So we've put together quite an interesting cast because you're actually in the movie. We, we took a, uh, a news clip from your uh, rally in Pahrump, Nevada in uh, 2012, and uh, uh, it, was, it was recorded by Patrick Kirby, uh, a filmmaker who, was, uh, who recorded you for KPVM-TV in Pahrump. And uh, Patrick was not only... Uh, a Ron Paul delegate to, uh, uh, to the Tampa Convention in, uh, in 2012, but he was also one of the directors of photography of Alongside Night. Obviously, you identify with the libertarians. You started your writing career with, as a libertarian writer, and this film will obviously reflect those, those views. But what about more specifically, you know, we, we can talk about libertarianism, and sometimes we concentrate on the foreign policy of libertarianism, sometimes we talk about the economic policy, and sometimes it's just the personal liberties. Does the movie include all of those elements, or is there one part of libertarianism that, uh, that you touch on that'll be uh, a greater emphasis? Well, um, I would say that if you're looking at any um, prior sort of work which Alongside Night sort of plays off of, it would be Atlas Shrugged. Now, Atlas Shrugged shows us the collapse of, of freedom in the United States, but the heroes of that essentially 
give up their place in the world and, and, and retreat and let the world collapse on, on its own evil. Alongside Knight takes a different approach, uh, an approach, by the way, which was recommended by um, uh, astounding and uh, analog editor John W. Campbell in his review of Atlas Shrugged back in 1957, uh, one of the few positive reviews that, uh, that Atlas Shrugged got. John Campbell said that what we needed was a solution to the problem of dealing with this statism. I think that I provide more of that sort of practical solution in Alongside Night than Ayn Rand did in, in Atlas Shrugged, in that uh, we take the approach of the agorist philosophy, that instead of fighting the state, instead of combating the state, you take a jiu-jitsu approach of letting the force of the state miss you, and we essentially build an alternative economy, a counter-economy, which is resilient and able to resist uh, the, the unjust laws and unjust edicts and the chaos uh, that the state brings to above-ground markets through things like the Federal Reserve uh, overspending and devaluing the dollar, the, the monetization of debt to the point of uh, what Ludwig von Mises called a crack-up boom type of inflation. And uh, the whole point of Alongside mm -hmm. Night is that we are able to be resilient, that we, that we Americans have a tradition uh, of individual rights uh, that our founding fathers gave us in the Declaration of Independence and preserved in the Bill of Rights, but that uh, when government stops working, when it stops protecting our rights, uh, the tradition of the American Revolution is that we have uh, not only the right but the duty to, uh, to preserve our freedoms uh, for the next generation. In perspective of where we've been in the last several decades and what's happened in the last hundred years and the needs for changes and the conditions we have, Tell me how, how you see things now. Are we just drifting along and getting worse, or do you see that we're on, in the midst or on the verge of a much, much greater crisis? Well, I almost feel like in talking to you answering that question, uh, it's a bit of teaching grandma how to suck eggs or bringing coals to Newcastle. Uh, you have been so eloquent uh, in your describing of, uh, of our barrel roll uh, into uh, increasing statism and the degradation uh, of our rights, the spying on all of us by the NSA, uh, the, the NDAA and Patriot Act II, with its uh, arrest without warrant, detention, uh, detention without charges or trial. Um, and so uh, all of the guarantees which the American Revolution were fought uh, to regain against the original tyrant on this continent, uh, King George III, uh, we have seen creep back into our lives over, over the centuries. And so the question is, can this be stopped within the system through, uh, through the political means, uh, as you did in your uh, two, two runs for president uh, as a uh, Republican contender? But the question is, are, are we past the point where we're able to rein it back in uh, by uh, electing people to power? And alongside night is sort of like the, um, uh, the fire brigade solution to when the system fails. Uh, I believe that we go back to the situation of uh, 1776, and we go back to the first principles as stated so eloquently in the Declaration of Independence, uh, that we have our, uh, our God-given rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we need no permission to affect those rights when government has, has, has systematically usurped them. I want to thank you very much for coming on, because I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going to be very interested in, uh, in, in the movie and what you have done, and they'll be fascinated with it. Uh, what, what's coming up now? An official announcement and, uh, and a presentation, and where does that, ha where does that occur, where you re release it? Well, the, uh, the very next screening we're having is going to be in conjunction uh, with the uh, Porcupine Freedom Festival, uh, the Free State Project's Porcupine Freedom Festival uh, at the Rialto Theater in Lancaster on June 24th. Then we are playing the opening night of the National Libertarian Party Convention in Columbus, Ohio uh, on the 26th of June. Uh, then we jump ahead uh, to where we're having a screening uh, on uh, July 8th in Las Vegas, and then we're having our red carpet uh, uh, screening in Beverly Hills, California, on July 14th, Bastille Day, which is appropriate because one of the plot points of Alongside Night is about breaking uh, people out of prison. I'm sure you have a website where they can go and check up on the schedule in case they might like to go and see it. Uh, uh, what is that website where they can go and get this information? Sure. Uh, that website is alongsidenightmovie.com. And right on the main page uh, is a graphic that says Fine Theaters, and you click on that, and that takes you to uh, all the theaters which are playing the movie. 
Once again, I, I want to thank you very much, and I want to just mention to the viewers, when you get the chance, take a look at this movie, read the book, or whatever, but Neil's worked hard in the libertarian movement and would like to move it along and get a lot of attention because uh, that's exactly what we want to do on this pro program, on the channel, is to promote the cause of liberty, and I believe alongside Knight we'll do that. And thank you for uh, joining us today, and come back to the channel soon.